Okay, this district is stable at least. So that's nice. Jonathan, old chap, how are you tonight? I've seen little of you of late. I was conducting research in my room, away from the nightly routines. Of course, of course. Worry not, I understand. The situation has been testy around here. I won't deny it, but we still stand. Have you any reliable friends in the West End who might assist me? Unfortunately, you will be alone. Except for our ravishing red-headed acquaintance, of course. What of my commission here at Pembroke Hospital? Nothing to fear, Jonathan. Your position here is in no jeopardy. You remain one of us, and you are always most welcome. What about the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stoll? Where are they? There are only a few of us. Most others would not speak to you. I am the black sheep of our brotherly flock, you know. Okay. What news do you bring? The news is not good, my friend. We try to keep the epidemic at bay, but street violence is escalating quickly. Tell me more about the violence. Geoffrey McCallum seems to have sent his war dogs on a hunt. On a nightly basis, Prewen patrols exterminate every skull and vampire they find. Have they come closer to the hospital? No. They mainly focus on fallen districts or abandoned buildings. But they're growing in numbers. They must be recruiting heavily. How bad is the epidemic? It is killing the infected patients faster. In less than two days now. The only blessing is that they are contagious for a shorter period. I have received an alarming letter from Lady Ashbury. She wants me to meet her at her house. I have been granted safe passage. Then you are twice fortunate. I have never been invited to the Lady's Mansion. And with the quarantine and controls, city access is nigh impossible. Is the quarantine serving any purpose? It is helping slow the propagation of the epidemic. But as long as we have no clue to its origin, its efficiency is limited. Why have you never entered the lady's house? You are one of her good friends, are you not? My dear Jonathan, you have no idea how reclusive the good lady normally is, nor in what great esteem she must hold you to let you into her domain. Thank you, Edgar. Okay. Can I yes, speak Jonathan. with you like a normal person? No, I Thank cannot. You. I think I'm gonna go and level up and see if that that doesn't fuck up the district. Hmm. We have a lot of the quests complete, which is good, I suppose. Hope that you guys continue recovering. Time to test this out! Where is my room? I'm a bit lost. This way. After that, I want to at least craft enough things to just cover the hospital floor. Let's level up these two. Up 
by a lot of damage. Faster regeneration. Hmm. Now we have one ultimate, which is nice. Cannot afford that. Cannot afford that. I think that is all on what we can afford. Yeah, it is. Fingers crossed for an okay district! Oh my. Yes! Fucking stable! We don't know you, and we don't know you. Well, serious, it's not quite stable, but friggin' much better than where we were. Filler is missing, so you're a critical. I don't even know your pillar yet. One, two, three fatigues, four fatigues, a migraine, five fatigues, one cold. Okay, we can do this. We can at least do fatigues and colds. We do have a cold cure, that is good. Okay, time to distribute the medicine! <laughs> I might as well like fully investigate this place as well while I'm still here. Tomorrow we're gonna do the other serious district. The other serious district and then we'll continue on to West End. It's a bit of a filler content, guys, but don't want to fail. That wouldn't be good, Cookie. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Doctor Reed. You Do healthy? You I'm afraid I've contracted some illness, Doctor Reed. Not under my watch, Nurse. Take this. You'll feel better. Thank you, Doctor Reed. Okay. Talked about all of that. Goodbye now. No hints to all the rest. Ooh. How are things in city? Okay. Family. Family. Good evening. Good evening. Pepper. Are you sure you want to leave this hospital? To become a nurse was a little girl's dream. But in the end, I don't feel that useful. I want more. I want to make things change. You are changing them, one person at a time! But you're doing something important here. For all the patients who need your help. We save lives, sure. Each time we send a cured patient home, it's a relief beyond words. But since the epidemic, I feel so powerless. Aww. Goodbye. I hope that you will feel better soon. I mean, I cured your fatigue and all. That deserves something, right? 
There's also at least one quest in this area that we should be following. More codeine. The looting is of utmost importance. Especially when I'm crafting so many fatigue cures. Are you fatigued? Good evening, Mr. You need blood, you need blood. Do you Fatigued? require my service? I have no need for your... Okay. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. I think you have very little boobs, I'm but yes. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. Hmm. The garden near the morgue. I'll leave you. Okay. I think it is possible that somebody may be observing there. Good evening, Mr. Evening. Mr. Burn Guy Medical. Sonia. Not really. I think you caught something in this bloody hospital. I swear I'm dead, yet smiling inside, Dr. Reed. Well, have some anti-fatigue. I will make sure you don't have to worry about your health. Don't think you can do much about it. Damage is done. Yeah, but I at least can cure your fatigue. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars, if you get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Have you tried taking your skin off and on again? Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured, I'm smiling inside. Why do you feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? What really happened? 
I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. It was an accident. Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. Dead drunk I was. The hotel was a shithole. There was a fire that night. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Bitch never woke me up. Left me to burn. Why lie about it? Come on. It's one thing to come back disfigured by the Germans. And it's another to get injured in an accident that could have happened to anybody. I don't know which is the right answer! You know you can't hide forever. One day you'll have to face your loved ones. Until that day you have no chance of real recovery. My friends all died in the trenches. It's shameful enough to be alive for these stupid scars. I don't want my children to see me like this. Ooh. How close are you to Miss Hawcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. While I'm busted on the outside. Hello, no, no. Still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of me blood. And the pain, it's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. You do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Kotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. It seems much more fun than the real one. Oh, it isn't. You told me before you don't want your children to see you like this. Do you have any other family? My sister Agatha has raised me nippers since their mother died. Don't want them to look at me like this. How could children despise their father injured in the war? What do you think? They saw me. Once. My poor angels left the room crying. They keep on having nightmares every week, my sister told me. They would get used to it, shush. Your sister's not a child. I'm sure she has nothing but respect for a wounded soldier, and you are her brother. You don't know my sister, Agatha. She may be young, but she's all discipline and morality. If she ever found out what really happened... She doesn't have to know. She's a sly one, my sister. One day she'll find out the truth and knock seven bells out of me. Nah. I'm better off here. Goodbye for... Okay, so you're sitting here and be friends with your vampire lady. Why not? Daily routine. Hello. Good evening, Nurse Good evening. Wait, wait, wait. It's just you again. Thought maybe Goodbye. it's a different nurse one that would need some fatigue treatment. I'm carrying around bloody a lot of it because everybody seems to be going fatigued. Do I have any more hints on you? Yes, I do. Tell me, Thelma, why do you feel so attached to Mr. Elwood? Why him? I'm. I I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. 
We've both suffered so much. He's the only mortal I... I find interesting. Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. Would you say you and Mr. Elwood are romantically involved? No. No, Thomas is a delicate soul. <laughs> Even though he disguises it. But I am not the woman he needs. No, for I am a vampire, Doctor. Okay. If you say I'll so. You. Have fun with that. Anyone fatigued? Fatigue treatment! Sense. 